I think Writer's Republic takes the best, and I mean the very best, of what Ubisoft has to offer in really exciting open worlds and tries its best to put a fun, extreme sports spin on it. I don't know if it always succeeds, but I like where it's going. Um, if you've played games like SSX, for example, then you're probably going to appreciate what you're looking at right now, where you get to basically be a snowboarding wizard, um, doing lots of tricks and flips and grinds down a very, very aggressive downhill slope area. If you've played Matt Hoffman's Pro BMX, you're going to like what you see here too a little bit later. I'm going to show you some of that gameplay as well. We're going to have to use a mountain bike and go down hills and ramps and open environments at incredibly high speeds doing tricks and grinds and slides. And you're going to find a lot of comparisons between a lot of your favorite extreme games. I think most notably Tony Hawk's Pro Skater would be the one that everybody's going to somewhat compare this to. And I think you're going to see there is a lot of comparisons to be had. And I think that's a good thing. I think emulating games that we know and love in an open world environment is not a bad thing. We have played this game before, though. Maybe it wasn't extreme sports-based, but we have played this game, most notably with The Crew 2. And I really did enjoy The Crew 2, not the first one. The first one was a very odd story-based game. But The Crew 2 let you basically, on the fly, switch between an airplane, a boat, and some sort of ground vehicle, whether it be a car or a motorcycle, instantly. And you could set up some really cool tricks doing that. Taking a car at full speed, driving off a hill, and seconds before landing in the water, switching to a speedboat. Or taking a boat off a waterfall, and at the last second, switching to an airplane and flying away. And this game offers those kind of thrills as well. You press a button, and at any time, the game freezes and will allow you to seamlessly switch to other vehicles. Now, Obviously, we're playing a beta, so they're not going to reveal everything to us today. But we do get our hands on snowboards. We get our hands on skis. We also get our hands on mountain bikes and a snowmobile. Now, the snowmobile doesn't necessarily offer anything fun in terms of trick-based. It just gets you up hills very, very rapidly and also allows you to navigate through the map at max speeds. There obviously will be other vehicles coming too. Uh, the name of the game is Going Around and Exploring, which is, I think, synonymous with pretty much Ubisoft standard games at this point. You're going to see a lot of open world to go see and check out. There will be collectibles in the forms of, you know, like visual eye points that they're going to want you to go to, like, hey, you know, skate to the top of this mountain and stop and collect a little trinket. Or there'll be certain objectives like grind down this hill or jump over a hundred rocks or whatever it happens to be. It's going to give you a lot of opportunity to freely explore in between the set piece races or events or whatever that will definitely replicate yet another game in Forza Horizon where you'll pit yourself up against insane races or these larger than life events all geared around this fictional television show of which you are the star. And the more you do, you, uh, the more points you get, the more objectives and the events you complete, you get more of a ranking, which in turn helps the channel grow, which unlocks more things for you to see and do. That's loosely the story, if you want to call it that, but it's all about having fun and doing insane, crazy tricks in style as you explore a really beautiful 3D world that is a live server, which is going to allow you to run into other people, some of which I assume are probably bots, a la the Forza Horizon cars that you know take on personalities of their own, you know, with your friends' handles on them, obviously not your friend online. I think you're going to see a lot of that, but you're also going to be pitted against other people too that are skating around and 
sailing around the map doing crazy things just like you. Um, and there's a hub zone that's going to allow you to team up with other people, find events. Uh, some of them will have these mega server events that are timed. Unfortunately, I didn't get to try any of them during this beta. But the idea is, hey, at 2 o'clock, everybody meet at this mountain if you're online. And we're going to have a crazy throwdown with hundreds of people online playing, which sounds really cool. Um, there's also uh, creative modes where you can create your own tricks and you know skate parks and all these crazy fun things to do that you get to rate and then share with your friends. Um, of course, there's a lot of uh, expression here and that is in the form of collectibles and upgrades that you're going to get, such as um, different hats that you wear, different boots that you wear, ground effects when you do different tricks, um, clothing, colors, that sort of thing. Anything that makes you really stand out as a skater or as nice. a bicyclist this or a as a snowmobile, you name it, there gear. will be stuff Certainly for it. Additionally, had. you'll receive rewards as well in the form of upgraded gear that has uh, statistical bonuses to them. So you will be collecting gear, essentially, you know, bikes that have a higher rating that allow you to go faster or to jump higher or whatever. And that is how they're going to gate content in this game. Um, you're going to want to go do an event and it's going to say, hey, you need 30 stars or you need to have a bike that has a 200 rating or whatever it happens to be. And that's what's going to kind of force their narrative, but also allow you to have fun and explore. As you can see, the map is massive. So there's definitely going to be distinct areas. Obviously, a large emphasis will be on snow, you know, on snow and that sort of thing. But you'll see later on in this video that I'm going to go to areas that have absolutely no snow, in which your vehicle, your snowmobile, is going to be almost useless. Now, they've done a clever thing here, and they're going to let you keep anything you want anywhere. So if you want to ride a bike down the snow, you can. It's not a problem. They're going to let you do that. It's not going to be the most effective. Your steering is going to be greatly hindered. Your top speed is going to be greatly hindered. It might not be the most fun way, but if you are hellbent on playing this game with one particular type of vehicle or another, you can. And I appreciate that. I really do like that. One of the things that is so frustrating to me is when you get a game with all these cool tools and assets and they really gate the way you use them here. You are free to do anything you want, and the name of the game is to have fun and be stylish and crazy and wild while you're doing it. And I think they've given us a good playground for that, and I think they've given us plenty of different ways to express ourselves creatively as players. And I sank, I can't tell you, countless hours into the crew too, doing fun things on my own and having fun and goofing around and just laughing and making up my own stupid stunts and getting points for doing it. And I think that this game is going to offer that work. as well. You're not going to be handcuffed to, hey, thing. you have to Keep go to this event. This is the only way you progress. In that sense, I feel this is much more, more exciting than a game like Forza Horizon because in Forza Horizon, a significant nice amount of your progress was right. tied to There's events. To from, so yes, you in. could drive around and there were sightseeing things. Yes, you could drive around and there were different challenges like speed gates and that sort of thing. But the lion's share of progression seemed to be based solely on the events. And while I would argue that this game does offer a lot of that as well, in the little that I've played, and again, it's a beta, it's hard to say, I'm an alpha, whatever the heck they're calling it today, um, I could say that honestly, I feel like you're gonna be able to do even more progression outside of events, and I really do appreciate that. But it's not all good news. Um, I, like I said, I think this is a fun game, but it's not gonna be for everyone. I think the lack of some of the structure may be very samey for some people, and I think some people may fall into a trap if they don't have friends to play with, or they're just not feeling the extreme sport type thing, I think a game like this could overstay its welcome very, very quickly. Um, the other problem I have with this is the incentivization to play. Um, yes, there is some customization, as I mentioned there as well, but I 
think a big part of this is going to be on getting that great piece of gear, that great piece of tech, whatever. And I just don't know if people legitimately care about that. Um, and I don't mean that in a bad way. When you think of a game like Forza, the progression is a shiny new car. Well, most people can appreciate a shiny car even if they may not understand all the statistics like horsepower and drag and all that other stuff, right? You can just look at it and say, ooh, that is aesthetically pleasing, I want that. Here, a lot of the gear you get to an untrained eye, and I'm sure there are people out there who are extreme sports people who may recognize some of these brands, a lot of people don't. So getting a pair of blue boots that, you know, give me plus one to speed versus a pair of red boots that give me plus one to speed or a bike that to me looks almost identical to another bike, it doesn't necessarily feel like I'm being rewarded as a player. And I wonder how long the thrill of doing goofy things, like as I mentioned, riding a snowmobile off a cliff and changing to a bike or a wingsuit midway or whatever it happens to be, I think there is a, f a part of that that could be fun, but I also think that there's a big part of it that's gonna wear out when you realize that the progression is very limited in that sense. And I think once you unlock all of the vehicles, you may find that you've kind of had your fun with it. And I wonder if that's one of the reasons they're all gated. One, to give you time obviously to play and learn with them, but two, to kind of stretch out this game a little bit more. It's definitely a maybe for me. It's not a definite no. It's definitely a maybe for me. And I think that's probably the best compliment I could give it, that it does stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with games like Matt Hoffman and Tony Hawk and SSX, just to name a few, or you know, even really dating myself, the ESPN X games from PlayStation 1 era. But that's it for me today. I want to hear from you guys in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts on Riders Republic. Is it uh, does it scratch that competitive uh, esports itch for you, or is it too much? Not enough? Does the open exploration do it? Sound off below. Let me know what you guys think. That's it for me today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Until next time, I will see you guys on the other side.